Welcome. This has uh, been a long time coming. We've been looking forward to having a call with you. Uh, from the beginning, it sounded like you had an interesting project, and as it's evolved, we've seen more about it, pictures and diagrams and then video. So uh, it's very interesting, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about this, this process that you guys have been going through. So uh, this started in the fall. It, hmm. As the bioresource and agricultural engineering majors um, senior project is there were six teams that were assigned each of them was supposed to create a tractor mounted crane it needed to mount to the three-point hitch of a tractor or to a quick hitch that's coupled to the tractor already and it needed to be powered by the remote hydraulic system of the tractor maybe uh, back up a little bit and, and give us a sense of what the uh, the purpose uh, of the apparatus is and, and what is you know what its core function or application is supposed to be so the main purpose it's a tractor mounted crane so really the main thing is as a crane you're going to want to be able to lift heavy stuff up that you normally can't and this is you know being able to do that with it on the back of a tractor so i know i come from a dairy and you know, the tractors are used all the time. Implements on the back are used all of the time. So to have a, be able to pick up and use this crane off of the back of a tractor, like if you say you need just some things in the way over there, you know, you can use your crane to pick it up, kind of rotate it out of the way, lift it over ob obstacles or pick it up and have the tractor move with it, connected onto it, just to, to provide some more mobility and uh, just some mobility and then being able to pick up excessive amounts of weight. Um, part of our um, like design process was determining which design criteria um, our group valued over others because obviously it's hard to have a, like, a perfect in all senses of what it can do. Um, so our group decided that we really valued it moving side to side as well as up and down. Um, mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily have like a telescopic feature, but it does raise and lower. And then we also valued that we wanted it to pick up more of like a mid-range amount of load. So for us, that was um, about 1,700 pounds. Um, and we were successfully able to pick up that load. But those were probably the top three, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. um, design criteria that we had in mind while making our crane. What were some of the examples that Mr. Forbes and uh, Dr. Sons gave you when you were designing and what sort of things that they have in mind for ideal practical situations in which they'd use it? They said something like being able to pick up a load like over a fence or mm -hmm. pick up um, an object and put it up on a truck bed was like mm -hmm. a big thing. You want to move stuff around on the farm. Um, they also talked like a lot about not only like uses, but like how the crane, they would like it to function, like um, that it needed to be really easy to operate and smooth and that they could use it on like, not only just flat ground, but like a little bit of a rough terrain that's the purpose of having it being an implement to a tractor instead of just yeah. driving a crane out. Mm -hmm. um, we also talked about precision and where you want it to pre be precise. So we use like a valve block and we wanted to be able to control it from standing outside the tractor. And so we wanted to be able to park the tractor and be able to have precision, um, like being able to move it at least like inch by inch. I would say. Yeah, I saw there was a bit of a learning curve to manipulate the valves. I saw the video. It started out a little bit uh, swinging quite a bit, and then some, whoever was operating it at that time mastered it quickly and was able to move that bucket full of water around without spilling any. Anton was um, our kind of like hydraulic councilman for our group, and so he definitely had a lot of tr uh, trial and error with getting the hydraulics to work. Yeah, I think the video you're referring to is... Uh... We had a previous video where we had a very small cylinder uh, mm -hmm. moving our uh, moving the crane side to side. <clears throat> and so if you would barely hit it, it would just fully extend the cylinder and just throw the mm -hmm. bucket. And then we switched that out to just a cylinder with a bigger bore. And then the video you saw was with the bigger bore. And it still goes pretty fast. And then if you just 
slow it down a little bit, it'll be very precise and smooth. We had that experience in the past as we dev developed one of our uh, log splitters that has a hydraulic log lift. It the, the most important cylinder on a log splitter is the one that does the splitting, so that's got a big 22 gallon per minute pump, which is a good match for a big five inch inner diameter cylinder, but people wanted the log lift feature, and that requires a much smaller cylinder, and if you had the orifice in the port, sort of the, the normal maximum size that it, it could be, uh, we called it the pumpkin chucker, because it would launch a log or a pumpkin across the, the parking lot. So we had to build in a restriction so that you would lift the load up under control. So interesting how that the pump flow to the cylinder diameter is you know, very important to get balanced. Definitely. Did you end up needing a flow control valve of some sort? Uh, no, putting in the bigger bore cylinder was, was enough. If that didn't help enough, we were going to restrict the flow to it. So many teams ran into similar issues, and some teams used uh, flow control valves of different sorts, a simple orifice, some that split the flow, um, et cetera. I was curious if there were numerous iterations that you maybe went through, because uh, you mentioned a couple different functions. You also mentioned a compressed timeline. There's a limited budget. So uh, did you get it? Did you nail it in the first go, or did you have to keep revising? Yeah, it was definitely uh, at the end of fall quarter, so before Christmas, we had one design that it wasn't going to be completely feasible by how uh, we designed it so then when we came back in the winter we made one that was for sure that was the mixture of the four by four and a half inch tubing and then the half inch steel to connect to as well so it was definitely a lot of iterations as i said previously we met every week with uh, dr haberlin and mr forbes and every week we had mostly Sometimes mostly similar, but still there were several improvements and changes made to the design each time and as well to the design, to the calculations. I think one of our biggest adjustments was after winter break, we decided that in our original design, we were going to use a winch and we just did not have a great way of powering it and our calculations weren't really adding up with it. So we decided to um, completely discard that and we went with a pulley and a cylinder attached to the pulley and we got exactly what we needed after doing that change. A lot of the cranes that the teams designed would have a hook at the very, at the end of an arm. And so like the end of the arm would literally have to grab the load wherever it was, but theirs has a cable that comes down and the cable is retracted by a hydraulic cylinder, which the motion of which is amplified by a factor of two with the pulley system. So it allows a little bit extra travel. So they can, you know, have the tip of the arm up here, the cable is dropping down and they can lo lift a load directly upwards as opposed to a lot of the arms, you know, are rotating or something. So there, there's like a coordinated outwards motion as they lift. And so, the, but theirs, they can just lift directly uh, straight up. Yeah, I've seen the video and uh, that, I was certainly going to ask about that, but I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, it, from an outsider standpoint, that's the most unique thing about the design. And I, I'm glad you covered it because I wanted to ask how you came to that conclusion. And I was curious if you looked at winches or hydraulically actuated m motors. And, uh, and I, I think it, it does look like a great, um, uh, you know, an attempt to sort of have the advantages of both, uh, as, as Matt, as you're saying, to not have the arc of the boom as it lifts, changing your lift point. What would you consider one of the most unique features on your design? I think, yeah, that being used as a winch instead of an actual winch. And then also uh, a lot of groups separated their arm into two components, while ours, we just kept one long, eight foot long arm instead and went with that. Yeah, when we were designing it, um, a lot of our initial ideas, we changed them because they were either too, um, going to be like too difficult to fabricate or too expensive. Like the winches were really expensive and the pulley system was really easy to fabricate and much cheaper as well as like having our arms split or even having it like telescoping would have just been a lot more work to fabricate and also would have like cost more tubing to have a telescoping tube than rather just one rigid tube. So, we so some of your early uh, concepts had other degrees of freedom that you didn't end up 
Yeah, yeah, one of our original designs, um, it was more of like a boom, but it was, it had like um, a joint in the middle. So we thought that we'd be able to move like the whole thing up and down, but as well as okay. that, yeah. but like a, like a shoulder. Yeah, and, and yeah. But like a knee joint. That yeah. just also, we just couldn't get to where we needed to be with that. So in the end, it's, <laughs> it's totally straight, right? Mm -hmm. straight, yeah. But then there's that. Uh, yes, the games, pulley with yeah. the rope. Well, it sounds like you guys have uh, faced a lot of challenges and learned skills. I'm hearing about, you know, uh, 3D design software, hydraulics, uh, sourcing the components. Uh, there's probably some, some welding and fabrication involved. Um, are there any other you know, areas of new knowledge or new skills that you feel you've picked up over the course of this project? Definitely team building. Mm. I mean, it's cliche. I feel like we've had group projects through all of college, high school, um, but this is definitely the largest scale and biggest group project we've had. We've been working with each other for the past year. Um, all of us, I think, are very different people. And so it's been an experience um, just being able to understand how each other works and see what we each can bring to the table since this project was also demanding and many different skills. Um, and so it was cool seeing each other rise up um, to each of our skills for certain areas of the whole project. We also um, learned a lot about fabrication and shop work because um, mm -hmm. a lot of us have like, we've taken shop classes and done like small projects here and there, but nothing like this big. And there were a lot of um, like equipment that we didn't know how to use. And we like learned from the shop text and uh, learned some cool new stuff, how to do it. Oh, that's, that's great. Uh, Cause I, I feel like that's gonna have great application in your, uh, in, in your futures. Back to the project. Uh, now, was this a competition among the different teams or? It was. <laughs> All right, so dare I ask, how did you guys do? I'm not completely sure. I don't know if we've gotten all of our results back, but I know we, nothing broke and <laughs> we, we completed, completed all of the tests, so. Your cylinder worked amazingly, so. <laughs> Glad to hear that. that. I think all the teams um, did pretty well. No one's cranes didn't work or failed or anything, so. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of whose crane did better. <laughs> there was a placement, and the competition did find a winner, but it did not name second, third, fourth, fifth, uh -huh. sixth places. <laughs> uh, so, um, but their team did 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 well. Yeah. It was not first place, but uh, we we were up there. Well. We were very happy with our results. Yeah, yeah. we were definitely did second get, place. Did you get some first or second place finishes on any of the tests that you remember? Um, I don't think we ever saw the scores. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are, the are there are there different uh, let, let me say, uh, different criteria like cost? Or... I'll I'll tell you that they tied for first in one of the events. <laughs> there were six Great. different events. Each event was uh, created by, as Josh was saying, by a different team. And the one that you created was the precision test, or the, yes. excuse me, yeah. the smoothness test. Yes. Uh, ah. So that we were seeing whether you could move the end effector of the crane uh, without jerking it around and losing a bunch of water. Yeah. And, uh, did you do pretty so well? Our, our crane was, our test was holding um, a bucket of water and lifting it over a trash can and trying not- Okay, that's the video I saw. Yeah. 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 Uh, so Jamie, you have a clip that you can play for us? I do. This is us now actually doing the test mm -hmm. on, the, on the day that everyone tested everything. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see we're uh, lifting up the- you can see how the top cylinder was used to provide that free range of motion first, and now Grace uh -huh. was going to use pick up the whole crane arm using your cylinder over the bucket, and then use the small one that gave us issues at first to move it over to the next target. Great. Well, I know Josh doesn't want to spill any of that milk that he just, uh, you know, worked hard to get from the cow. This was the precision test when we were trying to land the buckets on the mm. the bucket on the dots. This this was definitely the test that we were the least adequately designed for, <laughs> because the 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 other cranes that had the extra degree of freedom in the main boom or could telescope could because you're supposed to hit every dot. Since we just have a rigid arm, uh, we definitely struggled with this particular test. Well, it sounds like you've got a real f a lot of firsthand experience with the fact that everything is a compromise and you have to prioritize. Right now, this is like the ease of use test. So yeah, the was one test that was ease of use. 
which was this last one that was just shown. And it was, so we know how to operate our crane and the tractor. And what this test was is just to have someone else operate it that was not within the team to see how easy it was for them to use it and get adequate like work with it so you can see me like walking around and i'm telling him how you operate it but i can't actually like touch the crane and do it i just have to i can only give instructions this test right here was the max load test that we were able to reach that max load or that just over our rated load of 1750. And if you mm -hmm. have like the actual video uh, and the one that I'm filming, you can probably hear me saying in it, like this is 1600 or like, I think we did like three lifts. I think we did like a, a fit 1400, a 1600 and then a 1700. Maybe you, something like that. Or yeah, I think we started, it, we might have done a 1000 first just to make sure it works. And then we went up to 14 then 16. And then we said, well, we might as well do 1750 just to see if it will work for sure or not. So go big or go home. Well, I, I commend you and your whole team for executing this. It's, it, uh, it's a lot easier said than done to go from concept to execution and then test it and have it work. Um, I also want to say it's, it's impressive that Cal Poly has projects like this where it goes beyond the abstract, oh, here's how you calculate some math, and if you were to make one, what would you do? But to actually carry it out to fruition like this is, is really great, because out in the real world, ideas don't count for much unless you can turn them into something like this. Um, one last question. Does this beast have a name? Pretty much no, we did not name it because we are not keeping their cranes. Um, some of them are going to auction and the rest will be taken apart because we do run senior project every year. Um, regardless, they probably will most likely involve hydraulics as well as the steel use. So um, the rugged made cylinder, for example, will most definitely be used next year for next year's senior projects, which is pretty cool. So in a sense, our, our little project will be passed along. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that it served you well and that it's gonna continue to live many, many lives with uh, future teams. But yeah, we loved using your product. It, it worked great for our purposes and it would be really cool for the future years to be able to also work with your company. Mm, yeah, well, we look forward to that. Again, when we, when we saw uh, the name, we thought we just, uh, we have good people here who have good instincts and like that's probably more interesting than some of our typical uh, replace a couple cylinders on a bobcat story um, So I'm really glad we reached out and got to got to meet you all uh, and uh, let us know if there's anything else We can help out with in the future Sounds good. We'll be in touch. All right hey, Thank you, thank thank you guys. So much. All right, and, all right, you're welcome. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye <laughs>